I wanted to react to your horror stories, which is what we're going to do today. And I created a Google form where you can submit your story if you want to. It's linked in the description below. I'm going to go into some of them today. We're going to go on this wild ride. It could be weddings or mother-in-laws or father-in-laws or crazy divorces. It could be a crazy divorce. It, this could be fun. I can expand what I talk about on this channel. But first, my name is Katie Sauter. I am a wedding planner. I love talking about the drama. If you are planning your wedding, I do have a free wedding planning timeline linked in the description below. Check it out. It's also in the link tree. Give a butterfly kiss to that like button and put a ring on that subscribe button. Keep it peachy for me as always, okay? Let's dive into the first story. I had an ex-mother-in-law who believed that if she did something for you, she wanted to be thanked continuously, even for the smallest things. Ooh, we'll call the mother-in-law Debbie. It was my birthday and we had to have it at the in-law's house. Wait, why? Why is your birthday over their place? Like, shouldn't it be your own parents? It just seems a little strange that that's already a demand to me. I, I feel like, why does it have to be at their house? Why couldn't it be at like Pizza Hut? I'm a vegetarian and she knew that. I was also avoiding some gluten because of health reasons. She was making some boxed rice, something like rice aroni. I asked to see the ingredients and had chicken broth and wheat gluten. Ugh. This is already toxic because because like gluten like if you have gluten intolerance or celiacs like that is actually really really bad for you and then it's, it's so thoughtless it's like intentionally malicious i apologize and said i couldn't eat it she slams the box down and said i don't know why i bother honey calm down calm down. it's rice aroni <laughs> all i could think of was did you have to mortgage your house because of the rice <laughs> <laughs> That's a great, that would have been a good response, except it probably would have just created more drama. Did you get a hernia lifting off the shelf? Oh my God. No, stop. <laughs> just, oh, this rice roni man. Oh my God. Oh, it's so heavy. Oh, shaking it into the pan. Apparently she sulked during the whole dinner and she gave me the cold shoulder for weeks weeks honey it's rice aroni oh and she wore white to my wedding no <laughs> no you do not wear white to a wedding this sounds like maybe she was the one who needed like the karen needs a date we, we should hire someone for her so that she can be distracted and like not wear white to the wedding someone ought to spill wine on that dress that's that is rude you, just no don't don't do that Okay, don't, don't go out and ruin people's dresses just because I said so that, no one sue me, okay? No one sue me. That is so bad. That is so bad. And the whole family was pretty toxic. Well, I'm sorry. I am very happy I got out. Yes, yes, we love that. We love that you got out of that situation. Of course, years of therapy helped. Oh, honey. <laughs> We stand therapy. We stand therapy here. And don't worry, I'm not sponsored by anything yet, so it's okay. I'm not about to scream about certain certain therapists that all of those YouTubers are talking about. All right, we have another story, and this is our last story for the day. But if you do, remember, don't forget to submit your story so I can read it out loud and react. This has been wild already. Another horror story is that the couple had trusted the venue coordinator to coordinate the wedding. Okay, this is a mistake a lot of people make. A venue coordinator is not a day of coordinator. A venue coordinator only coordinates like the tables and chairs and like the where the outlets are and they know where the breaker is. Your day of coordinator does all the setup and coordinates the actual vendors on the day of and the timeline. And they're the one who fluffs your dress at the end of the day and makes everything run smoothly. So a day of coordinator does a whole lot more. They also work with you more on the on leading up to the event and they will also communicate with all of your vendors leading up to and after the event. Basically a day of coordinator makes everything smooth and a venue coordinator just handles all of the venue logistics. It's it's very confusing to start, but it, it there is clear distinctions between these two things. But apparently the venue coordinator wasn't really coordinating. So the writer says that she normally directs all of the vendors, which is very normal for coordination. 
um, and that the venue coordinator wasn't doing those tasks that the couple had expected. So that makes sense so far, right? Based on the description I just gave. And apparently the venue coordinator who actually, she did promise, she promised, wow. She promised that she would be doing all of the things day of coordinator was doing, but she was nowhere to be seen for a portion of the night while the planner, the writer, the OP ran the event. So it's just false advertising. She was also rude from the get-go and was uncooperative when I tried to give her simple instructions for what the bride and groom wanted. She was rude and I don't care how many weddings she has done. She told me that she's done over 30 weddings. Okay, but has she? I feel like sometimes people are like, yes, I have so much experience. I have so much experience. Don't mess with my thing. And it's like, do you, do, where's the proof? And not to say that this person doesn't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, but it sounds like her customer service was whack. Yeah. So I, uh, it's just rude venues, man. Like as a, as a planner, I have to deal with a lot of like things with venues and it can be really frustrating. Now that's not to say that they are out of line by doing some of these things, but being rude to guests is out of line. She continued by writing, the bride and groom told the venue coordinator that she'd handle the timeline. She sent it out the day before, the day before, not a week before, not two days before, the day before the wedding. <gasps> that is so stressful. That is so stressful. And then had the photographer and videographer showing up at 1230 when they were only supposed to have six hours of coverage, they'd be leaving before dinner started. I had to step in and save the day. No kidding. No kidding. You aren't like you aren't doing anything useful like as a bride or a groom like that should be photographed or videoed between like 12 30 and 2 30 usually and so it's like no and she says there wasn't even a first look so it didn't even make sense for them to show up that early it's like no if there wasn't even a first look that that makes no sense for why they would start that early man i'm so sorry i'm glad your couple had you there for that day though now i did get a question for me in my little google forum that i have that again check out the link tree in the description below but i want to get some more questions for me and make a whole video about it so i'm gonna wait on that one so if you enjoy my content you might enjoy some of my other content here